Today's Old Testament reading is the beginning of the story of Job. His story is one of my favorites in the Bible. This book describes the life of a man who had it all, family, wealth, a strong faith, and acknowledgement of God for his faithfulness. As a teen, I learned the story of Job by reading it many, many times and watching an actor tell the story as if he himself were Job. It was so impactful to hear and see Job's trials played out from his perspective. The pain of losing children and of all those serving in his household, his wealth being stripped away. It was stomach churning to think of his body riddled with sores from his head to his toes that he scraped away himself with a broken piece of pottery. It must have been humiliating for Job to lay in the heap of his own scabs while his wife and best friends incorrectly accused him of great sin for which they believed he was being punished. What he needed from them was help in caring for his ailing body. How alone he must have felt. He endured all of this because Satan wanted to test Job and God permitted it. What I didn't consider until now is why was Job being tested? Why was Satan on a mission to try Job's faith, and why would God allow it? A possible answer I found is that Satan was motivated to prove that people could not be faithful for the sake of God's divine design, and instead are motivated for the rewards they might receive. It's not bad to receive rewards from God. He offers many promises in the Bible. However, Satan did not believe in the idea that faith could exist for the hope of God's will to be revealed. For faith to be strong and steadfast forever, it must be rooted in the idea that God's divine design will come to be rather than anyone else's agenda. Let me say that again. Faith must be rooted in God's will being done to be permanent and unshakable. Why Job? Job was known for his patience and faithfulness already. It was God who presented him as being righteous for righteousness sake. Spoiler alert, as we'll learn in future lessons, Job was rewarded for his loyalty, even after all he endured. He and his wife enjoyed new children, and he again became a very wealthy man. However, the way he lived his life and the righteousness he preached to his family was not motivated by the rewards he received. Job lived faithfully because he simply loved and trusted the Lord's desires. Why should we be faithful? And by faithful, I don't simply mean believing in God and proclaiming Jesus as our Lord and Savior. That's obviously important. But what I mean is truly being faithful followers of his teachings. Being faithful impacts the way we live our lives. It dictates that we forgo our own self-interests and accept the will of God to live to fill his purpose for us. To completely submit to God's will is not easy. We face obstacles all of the time. And to be honest, when challenged, I've often reminded myself of the promises of God, the rewards. One can say it's a weakness of being human, Actually, it isn't. Jesus is the example of what it means to be fully human. Relying on rewards is a weakness of a sinner who is trying to learn to trust God. In a life application Bible, I found the question I should be asking myself. Do I carry out my spiritual duties because they are expected or spontaneously from a heart of devotion? That made me ask myself, can the joy and love from being in a right relationship with God ever be enough? For Job it was. And obviously, Jesus proved that it was more than enough. Again, I am not saying that the rewards of God are bad. The blessings are wonderful gifts. I'm just challenging our motives. If God knew that Job would continue to be faithful, even through his trials and tribulations, why did he have Job go through all of it? Often, we go through pain and suffering and never will know why. 
However, in suffering, we may find our faith grow. Perhaps in suffering, not only did Job's faith grow, but for his wife and friends as well. Maybe God's motivation was for the test was for Satan to learn, for Job to learn, for us to learn this truth. Faithfulness should not exist for the rewards on earth, but because God first loved us, and only through faith in him will we enter the joy of his kingdom. With this discussion of motivation for our faith, think about what our motivation is as a church. Written on the wall of our parish hall is our mission statement. Our ministry is to be a welcoming place where people meet Christ and grow in their relationship with God through our worship, service, and fellowship. I believe that this beautiful statement is why we exist as a church, and I hope it is what God wants for us. However, we all know that this is just a church. Without us, there is no church. Each of us individually are part of a church, of this church. So what is our motivation to be part of a church, and more specifically, to be a member of Church of the Holy Spirit? I'm sure that the answers are different for everyone. Some may answer the sense of community we experience. Others may enjoy the closeness we feel to Christ when we are here. Still, for others, it may be a place to serve our neighbor or a place to discern what God is calling us to do. It could be a place of refuge, a place of growth, or many other things. I know that this is a place and that we are a body which reminds me of God's unconditional love. And of course, we come together to worship and learn how and why to live faithfully. This time of year, we are asked to consider our annual pledge to this church. And biblically, we are not required to pledge, but to give. However, pledges provide much needed insight to the church leadership on how to build and manage a budget. In considering my own pledge, I look at my motivation for wanting to give. For me, the Church of the Holy Spirit holds a very special place in my life. Growing up as part of a military family, we moved a lot when I was young. A lot. And next to God's love for me and the presence of my family, this church has been the biggest constant in my life. When we moved here shortly after my birth, I was baptized here. At the age of two, we moved away. And when we moved back here, this is where I learned the liturgy. This is where I was confirmed and later where I was married. And if it's God's will, I may someday serve as a deacon here. As a community, I hope this church holds a special place in your hearts too. After all, this is the place where during the challenges and separation brought on by the pandemic, we were stayed connected through online and in-person worship. It's where we were still able to grow in our relationship with God through worship, fellowship, and service. It's where we know that when something happens, we're all in this together, whatever this is. Like many of you, staying home has afforded me the opportunity to reevaluate where I spend my energy and resources. In a life spread too thin, I've been given the opportunity to rebalance it. In thinking through and with prayerful consideration of where I will give my time, talent, and treasures, I am motivated to give where I feel joy, gratefulness, a purpose, a sense of feeling, fulfilling God's plans for my life. I want my giving to reflect the gratitude I have for my blessings, because in the end, God's blessings are the source of all that I give. I pray that all of our offerings of time, talent, and treasure enable this church to make God's intentions a reality and that our motivation in giving is to move closer to him and to do his will. Amen. <laughs>